In this installment of the ABCs of Mythology series, we visit the Hindu tradition with she of good flavor. K is for the goddess Kedru, the mother of the Nagas. If you would like to learn about fairy folklore, delve into modern fairy faith spirituality, and explore fun and fanciful fairy-themed events, please subscribe to Fairy Fortunes for new videos every Friday. Now, for the purposes of this series, mythology is defined as a collection of stories which concern a group of people or cultural development that also include supernatural beings or phenomenon. And in addition to this particular series on fairy fortunes, those mythology stories must include a fairy element. So I wanted to bring to you different types of goddesses from around the world that featured some kind of fairy creature or fairy-like phenomenon. And I came across the Hindu goddess, Kadru. Kadru is a personification of earth. And as I mentioned, one of her epithets is she of good flavor. And what this suggests to me is that she was probably very well-dressed or very fair of face or both. Another one of her characteristics is that she was referred to as the tawny one, which suggests to me that perhaps she was a redhead like myself. She is also said to have one eye. I will get to that story later on in this video, so do stay tuned. Kadru does not seem to have a cult following, either in modern times or in a historical sense. To me, when I was looking into some of her stories, she seems to be a figure very similar to maybe like Loki of Scandinavian or Nordic mythology, in that she seems to be a trickster character or an antagonistic feature in the mythological stories. And of course, most importantly, she is the mother of the Nagas. Kadru is the daughter of Prajaprati, who had 13 daughters. Now, in the stories which feature the goddess Kadru, her sister Vinata is very much intertwined in those stories. However, I do want to make mention of one other sister, and that is the goddess Danu, who I featured in D is for Danu. I was actually referring to the Irish goddess by that name, but there is some evidence to suggest that the Hindu goddess and the Irish goddess are are very similar and could in fact be the same being. So I do hope you will check out that video, which I will have linked for you in the description box down below, or be sure to check the cards up above my head. And along with her 12 other sisters, which include Vinata and Danu, Kadru is married to Kashapa. One of the most important stories concerning the goddess Kadru is that of her children and the children of her older sister, Vinata. This story begins with her husband, Kashapa, coming to Vinata and Kadru and asking them what they would like from him. She said that she wanted to be the mother of a thousand powerful Nagas, and of course her request was bequeathed to her. Her sister Vinata, though, waited with patience, and then when she had her opportunity to speak, she said that she only wanted two children, but she wanted these children to be even more powerful than the children of her sister Kadru. Now, in the beginning of the video, I mentioned that one of her epithets is that she is the one-eyed goddess, and that is because within her time of pregnancy, it is a tradition in the Hindu culture to have a hair parting ceremony for the new pregnant mother. And it was at this hair parting ceremony where her husband, Kashapa, had invited all of these very important sages to be present at the ceremony. She was glaring inappropriately at these sages, and so she was cursed to lose the offending eye after that ceremony. The most popular story concerning Kadru, however, is the story of her and her sister Vinata and great flying horse Urche Stravas. 
Kudru and Venata happen to catch a glimpse of the beautiful divine horse Urche Stravas. And they very much wanted to see this beautiful being again. But as they were talking about their experience with this creature, they were trying to decide what color the horse had been. Venata had said that the horse was pure white. And Kadru did not disagree with her, but she insisted that Urche Stravas had a black colored tail. And as the two sisters argued back and forth about the color of the horse they had seen, they made a wager. They agreed that once they saw the horse again and ascertained what the color actually was, whoever was wrong about the color would be enslaved to the sister who was correct. Now, the truth of the matter was, is that the goddess Kadru knew very well that her sister Venata was right. The horse was, in fact, pure white. So Kadru went to her children, the Nagas, and asked them to coil around the horse's tail, to make the horse's tail appear black. And this was a matter of great contention within her family. Her eldest child, Sesha, was very against helping his mother in this deceit. And he refused to do it. And it was at that time that Kadru cursed her own children. After being cursed, another one of Kadru's children, Vasuki, relented and got some of his siblings to help him. And they did, in fact, find the great horse, Urche Stravas, and they did wrap around the horse's tail to make it appear black. And therefore, Venata lost the bet and was enslaved to Kadru. Sesha, her eldest child, however, was disgusted by this whole affair and he disavowed his whole entire family. However, the god Brahma protected Sesha from this curse and made him the being which holds up the earth and he became the consort and companion of the god Vishnu. Kadru, of course, was selected for this particular series on mythology because of her connection to the Nagas. Nagas are often depicted as giant snakes, or they can also be depicted as kind of a hydra-like creature with having multiple snake-like heads. However, they are more commonly depicted as a hybrid human snake combination with the head and torso being that of a human with human arms and then the the rest of their bodies being a snake like tail and the human head may have a hood or several snakes surrounding their faces like a crown now there is some evidence to suggest that a naga and a dragon might be an interchangeable word for the same being but i personally think that they are two very distinctive fairy-like creatures nagas are found in india in Malaysia, in Indonesia, Thailand, China, and even in Greece. They are a very important creature to many cultures as many royal dynasties claim to have ancestry which is directly related to one of Kadru's children, the Nagas. The dynasties of Manipur in northeastern India, the Pallavas in southern India, and the ruling family of Funan in ancient Indonesia all claim to have direct ancestry to Naga beings. Nagas are spirits of the underworld and very associated with death and also rebirth. I think this correlates well to snake imagery because it is the shedding of the skin that we get that showcases that rebirth energy. Nagas 
have a relationship to both weather and water. So many rivers and lakes are associated with particular Nagas. They are also healing deities, but keep in mind that like all fairy creatures, the Nagas are seen as both simultaneously benevolent with their healing capabilities and also malevolent. There are many diseases that are associated with Naga energy. And to give you just a list of some of those, leprosy, cancer, kidney problems, and skin ailments, which again makes sense with the shedding of the skins, are all attributed to Naga energy and Naga influence. Now, in some of the stories that I shared with you, I did mention some of Kadru's sons. Sesha, which went on to be the powerful spirit that holds up the earth. And also another son by the name of Vasuki, who was responsible for helping her enslave her sister Venata by wrapping around the tail of Urchastravas, the horse. Now, I did mention that Katru herself does not seem to have either a modern or a historical cult following. However, her daughter Mansa actually does, and she is widely still worshipped in India to this day. There is also the tribal king of snakes, Takshaka, who is also a descendant of Kadru. As I said, Nagas are featured not just in India, but throughout many different countries throughout the world. But do keep in mind that Kadru is said to be the mother of all of the Nagas. So it could be that all of these beings that we find do have a correlation to the goddess Kadru and could be linked to her ancestry. Naga Moss is the golden dragon from Malaysia who fits the Naga appearance with the half-human, half-snake appearance. There is also Muchalinda who protected Buddha. And in China, we have a royal couple, Nuhis and Nukwa. And I do hope that I am pronouncing many of these cultural names appropriately. If I am not and you have a lead on better pronunciations for me, I do hope you will leave those links for me in the comments down below. I do have another Naga that I want to mention that I'm very excited about, and that is the story of the King Sea Crops. Now, if you're not familiar with Seacrops. Seacrops was a half-human, half-snake king and was the first king of Athens. What's interesting about King Seacrops is that his mother is said to be an earth goddess. Now, in Greek mythology, the earth goddess is named Gaia. What I do find interesting is that Kadru is also an earth goddess. And I find it highly possible that she just has a different name in Greece. But I'd love to hear your commentary on this. Do you think that Gaia and Kadru are two entirely separate beings? And Seacrops has no relation at all to the Hindu Nagas? Or do you think it's possible that Kadru is also the mother of the Greek King Seacrops. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. To learn more about Kadru and the Nagas, I do hope that you will check out the resources that I provided in the description box down below. And within those resources, I do want to draw your attention to two YouTube artists. They are the Indian Fabulist and Blissful Talks. These creators are from India themselves and tell wonderful tales on their channels that feature Hindu mythology. So I do want to point those specifically out, and I hope that you will enjoy and check out their channels. I do hope that you have enjoyed this installment of the ABCs of Mythology with K is for the goddess Kadru. And with that, have a magical day.